Hi folks, welcome back. So today we're going to tackle one of the most crucial building blocks in audio electronics and arguably in electronics in general, the differential <laughs> amplifier. The differential amplifier is a circuit that amplifies the difference between its two inputs, which means that it can reject signals that appear on both channels. So if you get noise on both channels, it can reject that noise and amplify only the signal that you want it to amplify. It's a very useful circuit. So the differential amplifier is seen by a lot of beginners, me included when I was a beginner, as a really advanced, really complicated circuit that you have to know loads of complicated maths and things to understand. But what we're going to see in this video is that if you can understand a simple common emitter amplifier like we've been looking at in my previous few videos, then you can understand a differential amplifier with almost no new information whatsoever. So let's go and have a look at a differential amplifier circuit and see what's so special about this circuit. So I've got a sine wave coming into this transformer and don't worry if you don't follow this but what this allow transformer allows me to do because it's got this thing called a center tap is I can reference this point and then that means that I'll get two sine waves 180 degrees out of phase with one another. I can then use this center tap to inject a noise signal that will appear equally on both channels. So what I've got here, and we can see this on the oscilloscope, is from my one sine wave input, I've got two sine waves that are exactly out of phase. You can see when one goes down, the other one goes up. And then if I turn on the second channel of my function generator, I've got a high frequency sine wave coming in that we're going to say is our noise signal. That's a less extreme version, and then if I turn it up really loud, just for demonstration, we can see, you know, it's barely recognizable as a sine wave anymore. It's a much more complex waveform, and what our differential amplifier is able to do, it's able to only amplify the differences between the two channels and ignore the common mode signals, we call them, which are signals that appear equally on both sides. So if I zoom in here, this is what we're going to call just our signal, right? This is what we're interested in. This is our sine waves that are 180 degrees out of phase. And if I switch these off and I focus only on the noise signal, which from now on I'm just going to call the noise, we can see that these are in phase on both legs. So let's have a look at how this works. So here's my little circuit. You'll notice here that I'm not using discrete transistors. I'm using this as an IC. This is a CA3046. And what that basically is, is it's just an IC with a load of transistors on one wafer, we call it, a little bit of silicon. And what that means is that they're all very well matched inside, all their VBEs are very similar, and they will track temperature of one another because they're on the same thing. So now we can see on the oscilloscope here, the yellow signal is my input signal and the blue signal is the output signal. I've got the noise signal switched off at the moment just so we can see what's going on. We've got a amplified version of the input signal. We can see here that the input signal is about 200, a bit less than 200 millivolts peak to peak. You can see down here is about 100 millivolts per division. And the output signal is about, let's say it's about 6 volts peak to peak or something like that. So we turn the noise signal on, we can see how noisy that is. And we can see there's almost no difference in the output signal. And if we zoom in a little bit, we can see there is a little bit of that noise coming through. And if I make the noise a lot louder, we can see more and more of it. The input signal is mostly noise. Like if I turn the noise off, it's the most of the amplitude is the noise signal. The noise is getting almost entirely rejected and the signal that we're actually interested in is getting amplified a great deal. So how do these circuits work? How do we calculate the gain? What's going on with this? Let's go down on the whiteboard and have a look. So I'm going to mention it a lot, so I just want to make sure we're all on the same page and do a very quick recap on a common emitter amplifier. And what we see in a common emitter amplifier is that assuming the biasing is correct, when you apply an input signal to a common emitter amplifier, you see that signal in phase with the input across the emitter resistor. And what that does is through the transistor action at the output, you see a gained up and inverted version of that input signal. Something like this. So just to give another example, if I applied a signal that was 180 degrees out of phase at the input, we would see this signal across the emitter. And then we would see an inverted and gained up version of this signal that's across the emitter at the output. So we would see something that looked like this. Okay, so that's what I mean when I say common emitter amplifier is a configuration that looks like this and it behaves in this way. And we can describe this circuit with a simple gain equation where we say that the gain is equal to the ratio of these two resistors. 
and I put a minus sign here to show that the output is inverted. There's a slight complication because the emitter of this transistor has a very small resistance which we call RE prime. And RE prime depends on the current through the transistor, so it will change with the input signal. And this is the approximation that I've been using to find RE prime. It's 25 divided by the current in milliamps. So we see that RE prime in series with the emitter resistance, so we can just add those together and lump those together in our gain equation like this. So let's see how this compares with our differential amplifier. So this is the circuit I built up, and compared to a lot of the stuff we've done, this looks kind of complicated and scary. We've got multiple signals, but the way we're going to look at this is going to be very simple, and you're going to see that this is no more complicated than a common emitter amplifier. Okay? So, the best way for me to explain this to you is if I just take it one side at a time. I'm going to ground this input, and I'm going to apply our signal to this input. So, what does it mean to apply the signal to this base? Well, I'm applying the signal between the base and ground. So, the loop goes through the transistor, through this resistor, through this resistor, to ground, and then back again. So, essentially, if we, we can ignore all these parts just for now, and what's happening is we're putting this signal through a voltage divider made of these two resistors. So, we're going to make a voltage divider like this, aren't we? If it was an ordinary voltage divider, it would look like this. And this ground is here. Right, I'm just ignoring the transistors for a second. And so we'd have a voltage drop like this. So we'd have half the voltage across this resistor and the other half across this resistor. But because this resistor is upside down, this half of the voltage is inverted, right? Because we're measuring from the emitter of the transistor. We care about what the transistor sees. We don't care about what it looks like from over here because the transistor is the thing doing the work in the circuit. Now if we imagine that these were both simple, so ignore this, these are both simple common emitter amplifiers and we'd applied half of this signal in phase like this and we'd applied the other half of the signal out of phase like this, what would happen? Well, we know what would happen we would get this signal inverted and gained up here. And now if we look at this side, we get an inverted relative to this emitter and gained up version over here. So that's interesting, but let's go see if that actually works in real life. Is this just some academic thing or is this how these circuits are really working? So I've just grounded one of our inputs just to show you that this isn't some silly academic thing This does actually work. So now you can see the yellow signal there is the input signal and the blue signal is the output signal at this collector here. And so if I probe the other collector, we'll see that this collector is in phase with the input. And it will be exactly the same if I switched inputs and probed the two collectors. Okay, and so you can see that is actually what is going on here, even though you know, we kind of were imagining that these were common emitter amplifiers, we can see that that is actually what's happening. And the piece of the puzzle that we need to understand why we're allowed to make that assumption, we will see when we do it the other way around. And so this signal is out of phase with this signal. So I'm not going to apply the same signal, because remember, we're actually applying both these signals at the same time, but we're just analysing them separately and superimposing them. We see the exact same thing happen again, but the other way around. This signal gets dropped like this in this voltage divider, and it's going to be plus minus, and we're going to, then we're going to come around here, and it's going to be plus minus like this. And so remember that this resistor, as far as this transistor is concerned, is upside down. So for this one, we'll see the exact same thing here, but just smaller. Because remember, it's half of the voltage is dropped across this resistor and half of the voltage is dropped across this resistor. But for this one, that flips this upside down. Okay, and now we can see these voltages reinforce one another. And so that's kind of, might be quite surprising because these were out of phase. And just by having them in this special configuration, we've actually managed to get two signals on opposite sides that are in phase with one another. And obviously because this signal is in phase with this one, it will create the exact same effect at the collector. We'll get another signal on this side that's out of phase with this emitter. And then here, 
this collector will be out of phase with this emitter because it's imagining it's a common emitter amplifier. These voltages will add up here and these voltages will add up here if we apply both these signals at the same time. And that is exactly what we saw at the start of the video. So now if we apply both of these signals at the same time, what we can see is that as one input rises, the other input is falling. And so in the middle here, because these are completely symmetrical, this A point in the middle remains completely fixed while these differential signals are swinging up and down. And that is why we can take this A point as a fixed reference point, just like a ground. We can even call this point ground if we want. Remember, we get to pick where ground is. Ground doesn't choose itself. As long as it's a fixed reference point, then we can take ground there. So that's why we can do this analysis and we can essentially ignore this resistor for the differential signals. Now, the reason why we don't completely ignore this resistor is because due to the fact that this is fixed, this A point is fixed, that means that the current through this resistor is also fixed. So this voltage will always be fixed approximately a diode drop below ground because this point here is at ground. Remember, we've got a transistor here. So this emitter is going to be about a, a diode drop, 0.6 volts below ground. And there's going to be some small voltage drop across these two resistors, but they're quite small. So, so if this point is fixed at minus 0.6 volts ish, the current through this resistor will be 8.4 volts because this is minus 9 volts. So there's an 8.4 volt potential difference across here divided by this resistance, 10K. That's 80, 840 microamps flowing through this resistor. Always. It doesn't matter what is going on here because this point does not move. So this current cannot be anything else. And that is the magic of this circuit. So no matter what we do over here with the voltages, this just supplies 840 microamps. And how that splits between these two branches are what gives it the gain. How can we write the gain of this down in terms of a simple equation? When we were talking about common emitter amplifiers, we had the gain equation and it looked like this. I remember the RE prime was the intrinsic emitter resistance and it depended on this current. Okay. And so if we're imagining that these are just two common emitter amplifiers, then we can use this exact same equation. The only alteration we have to make is we have to remember that the input signal is actually twice this, right? So the input signal is actually double what we're seeing here. What gain is, is the ratio of the output voltage, which is the voltage across this resistor, isn't it? Over the input voltage. And the input voltage is the voltage we see across this resistor. But then remembering that we only actually see half of that because of this voltage divider thingy. The important thing to notice here is this, RE prime. What sets RE prime? The current, the collector current sets our RE prime. The current in milliamps is set by this current source, isn't it? This is fixed, this is fixed. The gain of the circuit is set by this little RE. So let's go and have a look on an actual circuit and measure the gain. Okay, so let's just have a look at this signal and calculate the gain. So we've got 50 millivolts per division on the yellow trace, which is our input. So that puts us at about 40 millivolts in and we're at one volt per division on the blue trace, which is the output, which gives us 2.2 volts on the output. The input here is actually the difference between this channel and this channel, which are 180 degrees out of phase. Remember, this is a difference amplifier. So our input signal is the difference. So if this is 40 millivolts and the other channel was minus 40 millivolts, the difference between those two is 40 minus minus 40, so 80. So the input is actually 80 millivolts and the output is 2.2 volts. That gives us a gain of 27.5. So how does that compare to what we calculated on the board? So it all depends on our current through here, as I was telling you earlier. So if we say we've got 10K up top, over two times, we know our REs are 100. And our RE prime, we don't know. So I was using a nine volt battery, which was a bit flat. So these are probably closer to eight volts, plus minus eight volts. So we've got ground and then minus 0.6 and then minus, let's say this point here is minus one, just to be 
on the lower side. So that gives us about 700 microamps through here, right? So that means that we've got about 350 microamps going through either leg of this circuit. So then our RE prime is 25 divided by the collector current in milliamps. So that would give us 25 divided by 0.35 because 350 microamps in milliamps and that gives us about 72 ohms so then this is let's say 175 ohms times 2 350 ohms so that's approximately equal to about 27 so how does the common mode signals fit into this kind of idea of how the circuit works well this time we're going to analyze the circuit slightly differently because it's not a differential signal this a point isn't fixed so we can't use this a point as a reference anymore but now what we need to use a different trick to analyze this circuit so what we're going to do here is we're going to look at this circuit and we're going to recognize that we've got two almost symmetrical circuits being ruined by this smelly resistor down here and so we want to make these two legs symmetrical and then we can just separate them so just like if you've got two parallel resistors we can replace those two parallel resistors with a single resistor that's half the size of these two, we can also go the other way and we can replace one resistor with two parallel resistors that are double the size. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So if this were 10K, this RT, RT for tail. So the circuit up here sees the exact same impedance, but now these are two times RT. Okay, and now what about this point here, this short circuit? We can see that these two voltages are going up and down by the same amount. So these two points here will be going up and down by the same amount. So there's no potential difference from here to here. And therefore there's no current. So we can just completely ignore this as if it weren't there. Woohoo. So now we can analyze this as if it was just two common emitter amplifiers, right? So for our common mode signal, what's the gain gonna look like here? Well, again, let's go back to our common emitter amplifier. And so now what we have to recognize is we just got another resistor in here. So we've got RE prime plus RE plus two times a tail resistor. And that's all there is to it. So the fact that these two emitters are coupled together lets signals that are purely differential. So when this signal is the exact opposite of this signal, so they're 180 degrees out of phase, these signals cancel each other out perfectly at this A point. That allows us to treat this point like ground, giving us something that looks like a simple common emitter amplifier on each side with only these smaller resistors in the emitter giving us more gain because we've got a smaller denominator. But then for the common mode signals, when the signals are the same on both sides, they no longer cancel out here. So now the signals are also dropped across this RT, this tail resistor, which tends to be much bigger, which gives us a much larger denominator, the number on the bottom, giving us a smaller amount of gain. So now if we're looking at the common mode signal, so now the yellow signal is the output, blue signal is our input. We can see we're on the same scale here, 500 millivolts per division. So we've got a common mode gain of about a half. So we've reduced the noise by about a half and we've multiplied the input signal by about, let's say 25, gaining up our differential signal by 25 and we're reducing the noise signal by a half. So if we put two signals in, the noise and the signal in at the same volume, the signal will come out 50 times louder than the noise, which is great, but we can do a lot better than that. So we can do better with this circuit but the video is already getting 20 minutes long. I don't want it to be another 20 minutes long, so we'll have to do that next week. So we're gonna see how we can take that circuit, make a simple but incredibly effective improvement to it, and then use that to make ourselves a really linear VCA. So thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to check me out on Patreon where you'll see all my videos uploaded early. I upload extra schematics and bonus design videos and things like that. If not, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and most importantly, come back next time where we'll be carrying on with this circuit and I'll see you then. So take care, bye.